next on It's Your Season. He would doubt things about the processes and the promises over your life. And he wants to give you, he wants to hear negative feedback. Because when you give him negative feedback, he lets him know that you're shouting for Jesus, but you ultimately don't trust in God. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Hey, good morning, I'm Bishop Keith Felton bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I am excited to be back in your living rooms in 2021 with new content, with new messages, new encouragement to help push you into your destiny in Jesus Christ. I want to personally thank all the letters and well wishes from across the nation that have been blessed by this message and this broadcast. We are going to continue to bless you from North Carolina all the way to Chicago. Thank you so much for your love and your outpouring of blessings on Trinity Christian Center. This morning, this message I'm going to preach to you is going to change your life. It's going to make you look at things differently and empower you to keep walking through Christ Jesus. Watch this. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job said not, nor charged God foolishly. Amen. Let's go down to verse, let's go to the second chapter, ninth verse. Then said his wife unto him, Doest thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speaketh as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not to receive evil? In all this Job and all this did not Job sin with his lips. Can you say amen? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to teach this morning from the subject feedback. Somebody say feedback. Amen. For those of first time visitors, amen. I don't know if you heard us on radio or seen us on television. Amen. We just everyday talking here. Amen. Look at somebody say we're keeping it real. Or we might be keeping it realer. <laughs> Amen. Feedback. When God began to give me this, this, this text, he began to deal with me about how the enemy plays with us. The devil really seldom, when you, when you love the Lord, he very seldom comes at you, amen, with, with, with obvious things. One of the things he likes to use is people that's close to you. He likes to use friends. He, he would even use your husband or your wife or your children. He will use people that you had no idea were thinking that way towards you or about you. Has, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Isn't it amazing you can know somebody for a long time and that person can have a bad day and start telling you stuff that you say, I couldn't believe what came out of Mix's mouth. I mean, I would have never known that she was acting like and talking like this because truly we don't really know the people that's in our lives. You may know a caricature of who they are, but you don't really know people like that person knows themselves. And never put too much stock in a person that, they, that, that you don't think that they would never hurt me. The devil is a liar. Everybody will have a bad day. Everybody will experience a bad day at the hands of somebody else. Everybody would know what it feels like to be, listen, chained and shackled to what someone said or done against you or about you. But God began to deal with me and say, listen, the enemy wants to use things that are close to you to get feedback from you. Feedback is a response. Do you not realize that the, the enemy is saying things through you in your finance? He's saying things through you in your health. He's saying things through you to your family to get you to say something back. Why don't you just curse God and die? Somebody say feedback. Yeah. Feedback means that God said Job had gone through so much and Job was at a point in his life that he knew that when the, good, the goodness that God gave him was the ability, that the, the evil that he think that God was receiving on his life. He began to bless God based upon his relationship with the Lord. And sometimes you got to understand that when you're going through things, listen, when you're going through things financially, when you're going through things emotionally, the enemy wants you to feed back. He wants you to do something that is contrary to your construction. 
That's why when you that's why that, that word called compromise. Somebody say compromise. The enemy wants you to compromise your conviction. He wants you to compromise your relationship with the Lord by feeding into things that doesn't even fuel your faith. The greatest thing that the enemy can get you to do is to talk back. Somebody say talk back. If someone would sit here and curse you out, you would want to say something back. If your kid would be disrespectful verbally and physically, you would want the feedback wouldn't be promising. But what would you do if God said, be still and allow me to fight your battles? Because your feedback is only going to frustrate your growth in God. That means that, listen to what I'm saying, you cannot respond to everything the enemy throws at you. You cannot respond to it, even if it's your husband or your wife or your kids. You have to be still. Close your mouth because your mouth will make it worse than what it really is. The enemy is driving off us doing, he, he will cause things or rattle things in your finance and cause you to doubt God about what he's going to do over your life. And that's negative feedback. He will doubt things about the processes and the promises over your life. And he wants to give you, he wants to hear negative feedback. Because when you give him negative feedback, he lets him know that you're shouting for Jesus, but you ultimately don't trust in God. Am I, are, you, are we getting in the way right now? Isn't it amazing? When we was growing up, did you ever just be playing with somebody and say, Tony, you, we used to do this right here. I'm going to do this and see what they're going to say. Come on, y'all got a couple of them and you still left. I'm going to just say this. Have you ever called somebody and say, you know what? I'm going to say this. You say, Lord, I'm not lying. I just want to see what they're going to do. And you would say, you did that not because you want to blatantly put them in a, in a way. You want to see what was inside of them. You want to see the feedback they would give you if you told them something contrary. If they say, listen, I need to borrow $25 or $200 or this, that, and the other. And you told them that you were going to do it. And you just play with them and say, I'm not going to be able to do it. Just to see the feedback. Well, you told me you were going to do it. And you told me this. And I done made plans. And I did this and that and did that. And you'd be like, calm down, baby. Calm down. I got you. Or telling a kid that, that, that what, when a kid has promised something, that you, 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 you tell them, I'm not going to be able to do it. Just to see the feedback. Satan, listen to this. You got to get this. Satan can't stop you. He can only hinder you. And how he hinders you by throwing false subliminal messages about what God promised you and to make it seem like it's not coming to pass. And he only wants feedback because he's not omniscient, meaning that he doesn't know everything. He doesn't know the end from the beginning, but he does know how you act when you're in the process of God. Do you know how you act determines what's inside your spirit? Do you know the feedback that he gives is that I got to agitate her life. Uh, I got to agitate his life. Uh, I got to make things seem like it's flipped upside down so I can read the emotional patterns of their life. And when, and when you read, when he reads the emotional patterns of your life, he gets spiritual feedback to, to chart a map and how he's going to trap you up. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He wants to know if you're still dealing with loneliness. He wants to know if you're still dealing with the fear of failure. So he will cause things to come into your life. And if something that you really wanted to work out, it didn't work out, you're saying to yourself, why is it that I never get anything that I want? It seems like I'm struggling. That's the feedback that he wants. That is the feedback that he pushes and manipulates your life to get you to talk because he doesn't know what you're thinking. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? You could be walking around your house and people don't know you're warm within yourself, but you can't close. God said, if you keep it within yourself, see, Satan can't read your mind. He's not that powerful. He only reads actions. He only reads character traits. He reads things and he gets feedback. If you, take, if you say you're fasting, but you want to eat and you eat something, he gets feedback because he says that even though they say they want to do it in their spirit, they're not strong in their faith and then they're weak in their flesh. And he uses things in your life to measure who you really are. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's why you got to be still and know that God is fighting your battles and the contrariness uh, and the weariness that Satan is trying to push in your life is only giving him feedback. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's giving him some fuel to fight against you. 
But what would happen if you just kept your mouth closed? What would happen if you say, you know what? I'm going to be still and let God fix this in my relationship. I'm going to be still and let him fix it in my finance because the more I talk, the more he's manipulating my conversation and manipulating my actions and, and manipulating my thought patterns and he's using it against me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you not know when you're trying to kill something, you got to find out what works. We're going to talk this morning. Is it all right we just talk, amen? Because I want to teach this. Do you not know, y'all heard me the story of the ants and things, and I want to share that again. We had some black ants, amen. You know, they come in the millions, amen. They don't come in twos, they come in two millions. And periodically, I would have to find things that would kill them off. Trial and error. Satan is the same way. He said, I, I can't kill them. No weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. But if I can frustrate them to open up their mouth, they will curse, literally curse their own self. And see, Satan knows the power of your tongue. Do you not know that? I said this before. It's worth repeating. Do you not know that when you upset, you're still just as powerful as you are when you're happy because life and death is in the power of the tongue. If you're happy, you got power. If you're sad, you got power. If you're frustrated and you're about to pour out all your hair, you still got power. If you're closed in a dark room and the blinds closed and your phone is on vibrate, you got power. Every time you open up your mouth, every time you make a movement, there's some actions that the enemy is feeding off her. And if I can get her mad, she'll say something that'll curse her because course. If I can get him frustrated I have him sitting in his house by himself but I got to push them to get a feedback Job had already lost the majority of his life his livestock his kids his status in the community that people were reporting to what Job had and what Job had lost in the span of a day Reports were came and said they was eating dinner and the east wind came and blew down the tent and everybody died except me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Job is understanding that, you know what? I could play into this. I can get so into it till I can curse God because he had the option to curse God. The, oh my goodness. Does anybody know what it feels like when you almost went does anybody know what it feels like? Stop playing Holy Ghost Junior. Let's talk this morning. Does anybody know when you're sitting in your job and you feel like you're never coming out of this? Huh? When you're sitting in your living room and you balance your books and seem like you're never coming out of it. And say, this, I want to use your situations to get you to talk so I can get the feedback to frustrate your faith. Job had to be spiritually mature enough to know that he's trying to poke at me. He's just, the enemy is trying to see what I, he's trying to see. Because God told Satan, you can touch everything around him, but you cannot touch his life. You, listen, but he don't mean that you can't frustrate his life. See, Satan can't kill you, but he can frustrate you. Does anybody know what it is to be frustrated? You're faithful and you're still frustrated. You got a smile on your face, but down on the cellars of your spirit, people don't realize you was just as frustrated as all frustration. And Satan said, if I can push him or her to that point, they begin to talk. I'm sick of church. I'm sick of people. I'm sick of what I'm going through. All of that is just negative feedback. Getting you to talk. Putting you in an interrogation room. I remember one time I, we was going through some things and I said, God, I don't know how we're going to make it. Brother Anthony, I just closed the door. I said, I don't know how we're going to make it. I said, but God said, now, you know how you're going to make it because you know how you made it from thus, this far, from where you started from to now. You know how you made it. It's by my stripes that you are healed. You can do all things through Christ. And God said, begin to repeat scripture. We begin to repeat what I've imputed in you because if not, the frustration of what you're going through will have you in a room like the police officer doing interrogation. The enemy will interrogate you. He'll put you in a room and cause you to say something that you know you ain't got no business saying. And you say, no, I'm going to keep my peace. I'm not going to get upset. I know I'm sick of my body, but I'm healed. I know my relationship is going through, but we're going to be all right. And I'm not talking. I'm not speaking. I'm keeping my mouth shut. God said, be still and let yourself know that the enemy is interrogating you. Touch somebody and say, he's trying to get it out of you. He's trying to get it out of you. 
He's trying to get feedback out of you. He's trying to get you to say something. He's trying to let, he's trying to take all the sum totals of everything that you've gained and everything you've lost. Job lost his kids. Somebody here done buried kids. Job lost all his livestock. He lost all his well-being. But in all these things, Job did not curse God. Job did not give Satan the feedback that Satan wanted to hear. Because Satan told God, if you will let me have his life, I'll have him to curse you to your face. The devil is a liar. Tell somebody, say, I kept my peace. I kept my peace. Has the enemy ever put your back against the wall? And you may not did everything right, but blessed be the God, you did not curse God. You got up and put your clothes on and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I will not curse God and I will not die. Tell somebody, say, I didn't curse him. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Say this, I got to push you and I got to twist you to see what's coming out of you. I want to make sure yeah, you shout in front of everybody else and you speak in tongues and you sing and you preach and do all these things. But I want to see what's really inside of you by turning up the heat in your own life. <laughs> by making you say, ouch. Do you not know when they put you in an interrogation room, you know, they, they, they say things to you. We got evidence on you right now and that person over there is talking right now and you're looking up at 15 to 20 years and they lie. Some of them say they lie. They ain't got no evidence. They ain't got nobody. The only thing they're trying to do is make you so scared that you begin to talk. Uh, let me tell you something right now. Satan ain't got no evidence on you because but if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and behold all things are passed away. Do you not realize God said, you done, listen, you just Therefore, those who are in Christ Jesus had no condemnation. You can't keep condemning yourself. You can't let Satan put you in a room and interrogate you and tell you that I got this on you and I got that on you. But when God say, I forgive you as far as the east is from the west. Huh? Tell somebody and say, Satan, be quiet. Stay tuned. There's more to come. Most people don't fulfill their dreams is because most people ideas and concepts are wrapped up in other people's fear. The greatest thing that you can do if you're a dreamer is begin to tell people everything you're going to do. Because their faith is not where you're faith. They're fear-based, you're faith-based. It is men and women who are going through tumultuous relationships. It is men and women that are going through tumultuous things and raising kids. These are the dreamers. There are people that are going through the same thing that other people go through and it adversely affects them differently than the dreamer. So I would encourage anyone, if you're going to build something, keep it between God and yourself. Never put out things to people that cannot put out their own fires because they're just wanting to ignite your dreams and, and your passions and all the things that God has called you to do and lace them with their fear and their inconsistency. So the greatest thing for any dreamer is to keep it to yourself. Now, back to the message. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you in the bloodstained name of Jesus. No matter what you're throwing at me, no matter what you're accusing me of, you will not get in me to talk. You will not get me to feedback. You will not get me to give up on God. He blessed me and I'm going to praise him. He may let me go through, I'm still going to praise him. And all things that I do, I'm going to bless the Lord. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He said, Job only blesses you because he's got good stuff. Job is only giving you praise because you gave him thousands of camels. Uh, his prestige and his ambulance is all over the county and all over the state. Everybody knows that Job was the man. He had enough money to summon things. In fact, when you look at the text historically, Job is the oldest book in the Bible. So it has some credence and it has some foundation. But Satan was railing to God. He said, but if you would just let me touch his life, uh, I get him the feedback. Uh, I get him the feedback and tell him that I curse I get him the curse and God has so much faith in what he put in Job he said listen you can touch everything but you can't touch his life oh I just want to take a little detour right here and say look at the things that God allows Satan to touch around your life uh, look how he let, he said, let Satan touch your finance tell somebody I'm still here look how he touched your job situation and you still getting your hair done 
uh, and you're still getting your nails in uh, and you're still putting on press suits uh, and God said I'll allow Satan to touch every aspect of your life but he couldn't kill you in fact it made you better in fact the frustration made you shout harder in fact the sickness made you worship harder in fact the sacrifice made you better it was good that I was afflicted uh, it was good that I went through what I had to go through the feedback of my faith uh, is more powerful than the frustration that Satan is throwing at me touch somebody and say nothing can stop you no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Satan to have you in your own house like you're looking out bars, like you trap. I need this for Melissa. I need this for Marina. Oh God, I hope they don't take my car. Oh God, what I'm going to eat. Oh Lord, what in the world we're going to do? I can't be afford to be homeless at this age. And God said, have, I, have you ever seen a righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread? What kind of God would I be if I let you down right in the most pivotal moments of your life? Can't you see that the enemy is trying to get you to squeal? Y'all sit down, I'm about to get out of your way. All the sisters say hallelujah. You know when a guy likes a, a, a lady, he be saying everything, you, the ladies be like, you know he don't even talk like that. <laughs> you know brothers, we try to get proper when we like a lady. Hey, how you doing? And she just heard him over there talking, just a ghettos on the what. He done changed his voice and everything. <laughs> so the sisters, y'all control the experiment by just seeing what he gonna do. Y'all know what I'm talking about, brethren. I'm gonna see if he gonna open up this door. I'm gonna see what restaurant. Because you know, y'all sisters, y'all like to see what we're doing things. Because it gives you the feedback to see what kind of mind that you're dealing with. You know he went to the Red Lobster and ordered crab cakes for himself and didn't even bother to ask me. He must be selfish, ain't it? You know they gotta have another sister to, to validate. Yeah, child, he's selfish. And if I were y'all were given the time of day, click, no more. Relationship gone. <laughs> oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Listen, women, women operate in that spirit more than men do because women are more sensitive to the things in the spirit Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? They're sensitive. That's why, that's why Lucifer in the garden, the snake, the serpent, came to the woman first. She was sensitive to the spirit. And sometimes, sometimes when, even when you're in a relationship, in me being married for 22 years, my wife would go back and say, well, you need to really look at that right there. Just wait a little bit. Don't move too fast because if you move too fast, then they're going to do so and so. And I'm like, man, you messing me up. Well, she's saying this, I know you're walking by faith and I know God is going to open up the door, but wait till that thing gives you some feedback so you know how to step. Somebody said, listen to the spirit. It is the spirit that guided you thus far. And Satan will use your life, finance, family, health to get you to shush the spirit. And if you shush the spirit, you can't be guided. And if you shift your spirit, you stay still. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That is the spirit of the Lord ordering that man or woman steps. But Satan will use your situation to so solidify you and make you magnetize on what's wrong about you until you stop moving. And when you stop moving, listen to this, I'm about to get out of your way. When you stop moving, you start getting frustrated. Because anything that's not migratory, not moving forward, we get frustrated. We are a migratory nomadic people that if we're not moving, we think something wrong with us. Sometimes God wants you to be still and know. Sometimes he can't say be moving and know. He said be still and know that I am God. And God says sometimes I have to steal you around so you can get feedback from people that are around you. Because everybody that's patting you your back is not for yourself am I making sense to anybody in here sometimes you can go through things in your life and say God how am I going to do this God how am I provide for my child God how am I do this and God said I need you to understand that the more you come to me about that the more that the enemy can feed off that just keep your mouth closed be quiet be still don't say anything and trust me that's why the Bible says we walk by faith. We don't talk by faith. We walk by faith. And sometimes faith is walking means that you don't say anything. Where he leads, I follow. Sometimes you just got to follow God and know that if I make anything contrary, that's feedback to the enemy. 
He's waiting for us to do something crazy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He, Job, and I'm about to close. Job was going through all of this, but Job held the key. And what he's teaching us down to these almost four and 5,000 years later is this. When you're going through, shut up. Be right, I can't get no plane in there. Shut up. Look at somebody say, shut your mouth. Zip it. And I mean zip it. <laughs> when you're going through, don't even put it on Facebook. Because Facebook is full of just discouraging spirits. My situation can't go public. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? See, 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 you may suffer privately, but the enemy wanted on a conference call. He wants everybody to know you're suffering. But what would happen if you knew you were going through and it was just between you and God? You know what that means? That's your relationship. Does anybody like to be in a relationship where everybody knows your business? Why is that? The Holy Spirit is the only thing that we know that we're in a relationship with. And God said, what you told me in your living room, let's keep it between us. And God said, you don't have to broadcast it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is helping somebody. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The reason why it's happening to somebody because it, uh, it goes back to this. My relationship with God is so powerful that what we talk about, what we talk about, you'll see the fix it before you see the frustration. And after he fix it, then post it. And then when you post it, then you get your haters. And then you get your haters and say, I should have just kept my mouth closed. Because God said, I'll teach you everything. People that talk about you when you're going through. And that talk about you when you're coming out. That talk about you when you buy a car. And that talk about you when your car get repossessed. God said, you're going to learn to keep your mouth closed and move in silence. And demonstrate power in public. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Satan, I'm about listen. Satan is looking for feedback in your situation. Job was going through some stuff, Tony. You hear me? He was going through some mind boggling stuff. We hear people say, Oh, I'm going through like Job. The devil is alive. Listen, we are out of time, but I'm, I'm not out of word. I'm so excited to be bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. It does my heart well to be able to preach you and to encourage you and to push you into your destiny in Jesus Christ. And until next Saturday on this station, it's your season. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We are so honored to have shared this time with you. If this message has truly blessed you and you desire a copy as well as other ministry materials, please stay tuned. I had to be spiritually mature enough to know that he's trying to poke at me. He's just, the enemy is trying to see what I, he's trying to see because God... For your love gift of any size, you will receive this message in its entirety on CD. Oh, Satan, you can touch everything around him, but you cannot touch his life. You, listen, but he don't mean that you can't frustrate his life. See, Satan can't kill you, but he can frustrate you. For your love gift of $25, we will send you this dynamic message on CD and DVD. Does anybody know what it is to be frustrated? You're faithful and you're still frustrated. You got a smile on your face, but down on the cellars of your spirit, people don't realize you was just as frustrated as all frustration. And say to if I can push him or her to that point that begin to talk, I'm sick of church. And when your love gift is $50, we will send you this message on CD, DVD, and this inspiring book by Bishop Felton. Until next time, it's your season.